This is the first Sunday in the season of Lent. Our theme for this morning is God's good news. God shows his graciousness to all of us through the covenant he established with Noah, saying that he would never again destroy the world by flood. And in the gospel, Jesus announces the good news of the arrival of God's kingdom. He then calls upon us to repent and believe the good news. In the Old Testament lesson, Scripture records for us that people had become so corrupt that God actually repents of the world that he has created and decides to start over. And so he calls upon a man named Noah to build an ark and to rescue himself and the animals. Uh, we, we've heard all sorts of stories about Noah and the ark. We've heard rumors of the ark being found here or there in the world. Bill Cosby did a whole routine about God and Noah. And other people have made movies such as Evan Almighty where God chooses to send another flood and asks a man in suburban Washington, D.C. to build an ark. But in the story, at the end, God makes a covenant, an agreement with Noah and the people. It's the first of many covenants that God makes with his children. In this case, it's made with the entire world. The promise on God's behalf is that he will never again destroy the world by flood. The sign of that covenant is a rainbow. So that when God sees the rainbow, and you notice that it's God who sees the rainbow. It's not when we see it, but it's when God sees the rainbow, he realizes and remembers that he is never again going to destroy the world this way. The other interesting thing about this covenant is that it's one way. Most covenants go in both directions. You do this for me, I do that for you, one hand washes the other. This is a one-way covenant. Nothing is asked of the people. From the book of beginnings, the Genesis, chapter 9, beginning at verse 8. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Here ends the first lesson. We start to page 226 in the front of the hymnal. We're going to read portions of Psalm 25. We'll read the first 10 verses. Let's read them alternately. I'll read the odd number of verses, you read the even. To you, O God, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated. 
nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you I have trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your, for your sake, O Lord, forgive my, my sin, for it is, for it is great. great. Today's going to be one of those days, I know it's not Mother's Day yet, but there are just certain quotes from Mom that just seem so appropriate. For instance, Mom's gift for math calculation. If I've told you once, I've told you a million times. I don't know about you. But as a kid growing up, I needed every one of those million times that my mom used to remind me of either something I was doing and should not be doing, or something that I, should we do another one? Another one? You get the idea. If it was bad, I was doing it and needed to stop. If it was good, I wasn't doing it and needed to start. And I have constant reminders. Typically, when I'm preparing uh, a special ed conference with parents, one of the questions I will ask is, does your child do chores? And I get varying answers between yes and no. If the answer is yes, my follow-up question is, how much prompting do they need, or do they just do it independently? Very rare is the child who picks up the dog poop or takes out the trash or does the dishes or dusts the furniture without being told a million times. Our second lesson for this morning is part of Peter's first lesson, the first letter. And for me, it's assurance that I don't have to worry about reincarnation and coming back to earth. I've always marveled at the people who say that. And for one thing, there were always somebody famous back in history. You never meet someone who says, yep, in a previous life, I was the guy who swept out the stalls in the stable. No, they were always the king who rode the pony. But they also tell me that the purpose for our spirit coming back to earth is to continue to work on lessons that we didn't get right in our last incarnation. Well, if that's the case, then how come we don't know what those lessons were? Somehow that just doesn't seem fair. But I've got to come back and work on lessons from my previous life, and I don't know what they were. But the main reason why I have a challenge with reincarnation is because it implies that the death of Jesus was inadequate. And it was not enough to effect the complete forgiveness of all my sins. No, I've got to keep coming back to detention to learn a lesson over again. From Paul's first letter to Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to 22. Peter writes, Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you. Not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Here is the second lesson. Mark is the Reader's Digest of the Gospels. Most of his stories are in abbreviated form, and everything happens immediately. <laughs> so it is here. Mark tells us about Jesus' baptism, his temptation in the wilderness, the death of John, and the beginning of Jesus' ministry. We rise to the good news of the Gospel. This is the Gospel according to Mark. The first chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated and we'll sing our sermon hymn. 